Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are going down a new road on the channel. Now this is something that I've wanted to do for a very long time and I've never actually set out to do it. So we're going to start out uh, by setting the rules for these uh, or for this series. This series is going to be called The History Of because I am the most creative person when it comes to titling things. We already know this. So this is the History Of series, which by its very name should tell you everything you need to know about what this, this series is about. We are going to be taking a dive into the history of the ships that we play in game. Now, obviously, I'm going to start with the American ships just due to the fact that they're literally right at the beginning of the, the, the thing. So, I'm going to go through the American ships, and then I'm going to go into, you know, each nation down the road. Okay? As best we can. Now, obviously, there are a lot of ships in the game that didn't actually exist. And I don't know if we'll actually do those ships, or if we will end up doing um, something else entirely. But, uh, for the most part... I want to get to at least the ships that existed, and I want to go through the history of what I can anyway, at least what I've been able to dig up so far. Now, that being said, most of the place that I'm going to get information is going to be from Wikipedia. I know it's not the most reliable source of information, but in what I've been able to find, I mean, it is decently reliable for things that are historical, like ships and stuff like that. So, at least in that sense, I, I feel pretty confident in using it for a source. So, uh, if you guys have a problem with that, let me know down in the comments below. Is there a particular ship that you're looking forward to? I can name a few of them right off top that I know people are looking forward to. And we'll get to them. But it takes time, folks. We gotta go through all of them. So, with that being said, let's get right into it. Now, this first, first thing I'm gonna say is that the battles that you're about to see in the USS Albany they're AI. And the reason because I, it's very difficult to get into a tier 1 game. Uh, it took, I was, I was waiting in queue for like 3 minutes and never got into a match. So I was like, screw it, we're going to AI. So, keep that in mind. Now, USS Albany. The third USS Albany, which is the one that was in the game, was a United States Navy protected cruiser of the New Orleans class. I know. I was surprised by that too. She saw service in the Philippine-American War and World War I. Construction and Acquisition. Albany was originally laid down at Newcastle upon Tyne, England by Armstrong Whitworth on 8th of December of 1897. Man, 8th of December just pops up a lot, doesn't it? But, uh, yeah. For the Brazilian Navy as Almirante Abreu, I apologize if I say that wrong, but but was purchased while still on the way by United States Navy on March 16th of 1898 to prevent her from being acquired by the Spanish Navy during the Spanish-American War. She was renamed Albany after the city of Albany, New York and launched in February of 1899. Sponsored by Mrs. John C. Colwell, the wife of American Naval Attaché in London. She was commissioned in the River Tyne England on May 29th of 1900. She cost one million two hundred and seven thousand six hundred and forty four dollars and thirteen cents for the hull and the machinery. That's a lot of money back then. Let's be real. Hey, we were talking in 1900. 1 1.2 million. That's a lot of money. So her service history began in uh, August or August. It began on the 26th of June in 1900. Albany put to sea bound for service in the Philippines with the Philippine-American War. Steaming via Gibraltar, the Mediterranean Sea, the Suez Canal, and the Indian Ocean, the cruiser arrived at, uh, Cavite? Is it Cavite? Or Cavite? In the Philippines on November 22nd. She served with the Asiatic Fleet in the Philippines for the next seven months. During the, that tour of duty, the protected cruiser visited Hong Kong, from December 28, 1900 to uh, February 17, 1901 for repairs in dry dock. On July 3, 1901, she departed Cavit, or Cavite to return to the European station, retracing the path of her maiden voyage. Albany transited the Suez Canal early in September and re-entered the Mediterranean on 15 September. For Europe, 
For the following nine months, the warship cruised the warm waters of the Mediterranean, visiting ports in Greece, France, Italy, Spain, and Egypt. She entered the Atlantic on 18th of June, 1902, and after stops at Cherbourg, or is it Cherbourg? Uh, I always get French screwed up. I apologize. But in France, and Southampton, England. She rendezvoused with the USS Illinois Battleship Number 7 and protected cruisers USS Chicago, USS San Francisco uh, off... Huh? Yeah, USS San Francisco on July 12th. She exercised with those ships until 20th of July, at which time she set a course for the Baltic Sea. During her sojourn in the waters... So sojourn? Sojourn? I'm gonna have to go with sojourn. In the waters of Northern Europe, she visited Stockholm, Sweden, uh, Kronstadt, Russia, and Copenhagen, Denmark. Early in September, she exited the Baltic, and after a visit to Plymouth, re-entered the Mediterranean on the 12th. After almost two months of duty in the Middle Sea, Albany set a course for the Western Hemisphere early in November. She arrived in the West Indies in late November and ended the year in fleet tactical maneuvers, which she concluded early in January 1903. On the 5th, the ship set a course for Boston. After repairs at Boston and at the New York Naval Yard, Albany got underway 15th of February 1903. At the end of a brief tour of duty in the Mediterranean, she transited the Suez Canal at the end of 1903 and set a course for the Far East. She stopped for coal at Hong Kong and then joined the Asiatic fleet at Chifu in northern China. She spent most of the remainder of 1903 operating with that fleet in the waters of northern China, Korea, and Japan. Upon returning to Kobe and proceeding thence to Yokohama, the protected cruiser embarked upon a voyage to Hawaii. On December 3rd, she arrived at Honolulu on the 16th. Embarked upon a voyage to Hawaii on December 3rd. She arrived in Honolulu on the 16th and remained there until the 29th, at which time she headed back towards the Western Pacific. She made a stop at Guam and in the Ladrone, now Marianas Islands, before arriving at Cavite in the Philippines on the 20th of January, 1904. She operated in the Philippines for about a month and headed for the coast of China on 19th of February. The warship reached Shanghai four days later and remained in the vicinity for a month before getting underway for the Philippines on March 22nd. She laid over at Cavite from March 26th to Mar or April 18th. The cruiser made another brief voyage to Shanghai and back to the Philippines between the 18th and 30th of April. She followed a week at Cavite. Following a week at Cavite, she put to sea, bound for the United States. She made stops en route at Guam, Honolulu, and arrived in port at Bremerton, Washington on the 16th of June. Soon thereafter, Albany was placed out of commission at the Puget Sound Navy Yard. The protected cruiser remained inactive for almost three years. By January 1909, Albany was transferred from the Pacific Fleet to Special Service Squadron, signifying her patrol mission and readiness to disembark landing forces to protect American interests in Mexico and Central America. In 1909, while rendezvousing with other Navy ships at Magdalena Bay, Baja, California, Albany assisted in the rescue of passengers from the stricken mail steamship, Indiana, that had run aground off Isla Santa Margarita. On the evening of April 16th, Albany Commander Henry T. Mayo, commanding, received expedited orders to immediately prepare to depart Mare Island and proceed to San Diego to embark Special Peace Envoy William I. Buchanan and then on to Central America for a two-month peacekeeping cruise. Albany departed Mare Island on 20th of April. For the next 15 months, she cruised the west coast of North and Central America conducted surveillance missions to protect U.S. citizens and, properly, and property in the perennially unsettled republics of Mexico, Honduras, El Salvador, and Nicaragua, returning to Mare Island on the 18th of July, 1909. From 8th of, 
8th through the 10th of September, 1909, Albany and the protected cruiser USS St. Louis, along with three torpedo boats, were anchored at Santa Monica Bay for dedication ceremonies of the Santa Monica Municipal Pier to coincide with California Admission Day. Visitors toured the warships and four companies of Blue Jackets, Blue Jackets, I believe, were the actual um, sailors from the ships. Two from each cruiser marched in a parade from Santa Monica, California, City Hall, to the new pier. In October 1990, or 1909, while Albany was at Mare Island undergoing repairs and preparing to steam to south uh, to Magdalena Bay, she and other U.S. and foreign warships participated in the Portola Festival at San Francisco, a citywide fair held on the 19th through the 23rd of October to mark the 140th anniversary of Portolo Expedition. The first recorded Spanish and European land entry and exploration of present-day California, and to proclaim to the world that San Francisco was recovered from its devastating 1906 earthquake. Duties in the Pacific and Mexican waters. Nicaragua proved to be her primary area of operations during the first part of 1910, when she was at, uh, attached to Rear Admiral William W. Campbell's uh, Nicaraguan Expeditionary Force. She returned north to the Puget Sound Naval Yard in May to begin preparations to deploy once more to the Asiatic Fleet. On the 4th of August, she departed the Navy Yard on her way to Chinese waters. After stops at Honolulu in Hawaii and Yokohama in Japan, Albany arrived at Wusong, China on the 15th of September. For almost three years, the protected cruiser piled, er, plied e far eastern waters, visiting ports from the Philippines to China to Japan. On September 20th, 1913, the warship left Yokohama bound for home. She stopped at Honolulu from October 13th to November 5th, and arrived in San Francisco on November 12th. She moved north to Puget Sound at mid-month and was placed in reserve there on December 23rd following repairs. She was recommissioned on April 17th, 1914. That summer and fall, she cruised Mexican waters in the wake of incident at Tampico and the resultant landing at Veracruz. She concluded that duty late in November and on December 4, 1914, was placed out of commission at Bremerton for a general overhaul. At the conclusion of those repairs late in the spring of 1915, Albany assigned training duty with the state naval militias of Washington and Oregon. On May 12, 1916, she was returned to full commission. Lieutenant Commander uh, Oren G. Murphan in command. Upon returning to active service, she once again headed for Mexican waters, this time as part of the United States' response to the massacre of American citizens in Columbus, New Mexico, perpetrated by Pancho Villa and his band of marauders. In World War I, by early 1917, Albany was operating with the Asiatic fleet off the coast of Virginia. I lied. By, the, by early 1917, Albany was operating with the U.S. Atlantic Fleet off the coast of Virginia. This change in assignment came as a result of worsening relations between the United States and the German Empire over the latter country's unrestricted submarine warfare campaign. In February and March, relations deteriorated rapidly, and early in April, the United States entered World War I on the side of the Allied powers. On July 5th, Albany received orders to report to New York for convoy duty. She was assigned duties as flagship for Squadron 6 Patrol Force 8 Atlantic Fleet. As such, she carried the flag of Rear Admiral William C. Watts. For the duration of World War I, the cruiser escorted convoys of merchant ships, cargo men, and trans er, troop transports back and forth across the Atlantic between July 1917 and the end of war on 11th of November 1918. She shepherded 11 such convoys safely between the United States and Europe. In 1919, Albany was once more assigned to the Asiatic Fleet. At the time, the Russian Civil War was being fought between the Bolshevik and non-Bolshevik uh, faction. Various Allied powers sent military contingents to uh, several Russian ports. The United States landed troops at Vladivostok in Siberia possibly to check Japanese pretensions in that area and to secure the port 
as an exit for the Czech Legion. Then transiting the Trans-Siberian Railway in 1919 and early 1920, Albany did several tours of duty at Vladivostok in support of American troops ashore. She also sent armed landing parties ashore on several occasions in further support of those troops and to evacuate sick and wounded men. American troops were withdrawn in the spring of 1920 and Albany resumed normal peacetime duty with the Asiatic fleet. That service included the usual summers in Chinese waters, alternated with winters in the Philippines, reclassified as a gunboat as PG-36 on July 17, 1920, Albany was again reclassified as a light cruiser as CL-23 on August 8, 1921. In July 1922, Albany departed Chinese waters for the last time and headed home. She arrived at the Mare Island Navy Yard on the 6th of August and was placed out of commission on October 10, 1922. She was berthed at Mare Island until November 3, 1929, when her name was struck from the Naval Vessel Register on 11th of, or yeah, 11th of February, 1930. Albany was sold for scrap. Alright guys, well I really do hope that you guys enjoyed this. I know I, I gotta get a little bit more comfortable with reading uh, all of this stuff, but I hope you guys enjoyed the little bit of a deep dive into the Navy history of USS Albany, and uh, let me know if you guys are looking forward to seeing more of these in the future. I plan on trying to uh, go through as many ships that actually existed as possible, especially the ones of serious naval historical, like, precedents like there's a lot of really really prominent naval vessels that uh have great stories behind them and i i really do want to try to tell those so let me know what you guys think and if you like what i'm doing punch the like button leave a comment below subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and as always i will see you in the next video